I'm Stephanie Hendrickson with Additive Manufacturing Magazine, and I'm here at Penn State talking to students in their graduate program in Additive Manufacturing and Design. Uh, many of the students in this program are pursuing a master's degree in Additive Manufacturing, while others are taking these classes to augment their other studies. So here with me is Brad Hanks, a graduate research assistant pursuing a PhD in mechanical engineering with a minor in additive manufacturing. What has the experience in this program been like so far? In the classes, I've been able to learn a lot about uh, a variety of different topics from material science, which I haven't done for many years, uh, trying to understand the science of, of what's happening in an additive process, uh, to also considering uh, design, which is um, becomes almost a new method of thinking when you consider additive manufacturing, uh, very different than conventional manufacturing processes. One thing that I'm starting to look into more is uh, the microstructure or, or even the mesostructure of the material. And in conventional manufacturing, you wouldn't consider that because manufacturing it at that level would be, uh, often increases the complexity um, beyond what you, is, is reasonable. But in additive manufacturing, there's a, a certain freedom that allows you to manufacture at the smaller scale and increase the complexity of a part without directly increasing the cost of the part. That allows you to design at multiple length scales rather than just the bulk geometry of the part. You can include uh, complexities at a smaller scale without increasing your cost. So as a student in residence on the campus, um, you've had the opportunity to do some research with faculty in the AM program. Um, talk to me about the research that you're working on in the medical device field. Sure. So one of the first projects I worked on was a radio frequency ablation electrode. Uh, and in radio frequency ablation, the shape of the electrode determines the shape of the treatment zone. My first project was working on a medical uh, surgical tool that where we could use optimization to adjust the shape of the electrode to match the shape of the tumor. Um, this is one of the prototypes that we made uh, using added manufacturing. So a lot of the work that I did was on the optimization side. How do we optimize the, the shape or the size of the electrode? And then the ability to use added manufacturing allows us to now make these custom parts um, manufacturable um, because of the, the cost. Uh, if we only had a single size electrode that we were doing, then it, it's probably cheaper to go with other manufacturing processes. But in the case of the optimization software where we're looking at customizing the shape of the electrode for a specific treatment zone, then we're making one-off components or, or customized components personalized to a patient, for example. Um, so yeah, this one is about three times scale. Uh, the outer sheath here represents an endoscopic needle, which is roughly about a millimeter in diameter, outer diameter, or would be. And this outer needle can be introduced up to the edge of a tumor and then the electrode would be in, um, deployed from the end of that needle into the tumor. Um, so that's how this device would function and then the optimization works to choose uh, the size and shape of your electrode to customize it for your treatment. And so the actual 3D printed part here are these tines at the end of the device, correct? Yeah, so this, this is a, the only 3D printed port, a portion of it is this part, which is the, the customized portion of the electrode. Um, and what would that be printed out of and uh, what type of process would you make it with? Uh, this prototype is uh, printed out of Inconel, uh, which is not a biocompatible material. The final product would need to be either a stainless steel or uh, other biocompatible material. Uh, the in nickel content in the Inconel is too high. And the process that we used to manufacture this was uh, powder bed fusion. So given the research that you've done and the coursework you've completed, what is the potential for additive manufacturing in the medical industry? The biggest potential I see is being able to create custom parts for patients. These can be customized and uh, manufactured at a cost that's available um, or reasonable for a custom part. Uh, whereas before, it would be prohibitively expensive to manufacture a custom medical implant. So how are you hoping to apply your knowledge about additive manufacturing after completing your degree? Really being able to use optimization to learn how to use additive manufacturing. Uh, there's a lot of design freedom in additive manufacturing, and I, I don't think we have a good idea really of how to use it all yet. I think really being able to combine these tools will help us learn how to take full advantage of additive manufacturing. 